Yeah. It, Judas it, it, Priest, it, motor, Motorhead, and uh, Heaven and Hell, right? It was, oh my God, what, we got to see Dio. Yeah, we did. We got to before see died, Dio yeah. and Lemmy before they died because yeah. they would have died years within that time frame. It was close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh my God, I, I completely say, forgot about the Heaven and Hell. Yeah. Oh, that was. Yeah, yeah I think Dio passed away maybe two years after we saw him. Such, such a loss of a voice. Two extreme different personalities yeah. when you think of, of Lemmy uh, and, and Dio. And, sure. and, and, and once again, you know, I, I bring this up because at the end of the day, uh, there's certain things that you can measure and there's certain things that you can't measure. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the logical side of me can formulate logistics or whatnot, but nothing can express the bond that, that two people that went to a metal show get. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's that unmeasurable thing. And I, I've said this before, and I don't want to be uh, uh, insulting when I say this, especially to you because, you know, you're a professional in this. Sense. I uh, am known for saying numbers lie, relationships rule. And because to me, relationships okay. rule trump anything that you might sure. do. And to me, when I say numbers lie, it's more of the, the half the glass can be half full or half empty at the same time. You know what I mean? It's context and numbers without context are just that. So you can take yeah. uncontextual numbers and make them be anything. Right. But once again, you're a of professional. So, so I don't want to be insulting and say that what you do is a lie. That's not what I'm saying. But it, it, the, the point of it was to put focus on that relationship as an amplifying factor uh, to, to, sure. to something uh, that, that can be quantifiable. Right. So all that to say, oh, my God, I can't believe I get to talk to you. You are 10 and a half yeah. hours away from me. You are in a, on a completely different continent. You're no longer in Toronto. Yeah. I'm no longer in Toronto. Introduce yourself, Dr. Derek Gray. Doctor. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Derek Gray, as you know, Rob. Um, so I'm uh, the chief of measurement science and business analytics for Bark India which is the largest television measurement service in the world. I've been working in audience measurement for 20 years now, almost 20 years, yeah, 19 years. Uh, worked with you in Canada at New Maris for, for a while there. That's where I got my feet into measurement. Um, yeah, so I took the leap about two years ago, decided to leave Canada and head over to India. And you know, as I said, it is the largest television market in the world. And it is growing, contrary to many other countries where TV is starting to decline. It's just growing like you wouldn't believe here in India. So it was an awesome opportunity and uh, hopped on board. And I've been living here in Mumbai, loving it. And uh, definitely culture shock, which is great. Um, but uh, yeah, learning so much. And it's, it's just taken my career to the next step and allowed me to learn more as a person, right? Yeah, well, it's like anything else. Well, let's use statistics. You can have a sample, you sure. know, and that sample might be 6,000 people out of, let's say, you know, 100 million people or whatnot. And you can assess something. But a larger sample is always better because the larger you have, the more data and the more touch points and the more variations you can skew, right? So you are in a scenario sure. where all of the math, if you will, that, that you've been taught and trained and, and, and crafted to use can now be applied to yeah. huge data. And, and, you know, we use the term big data, obviously, a lot when we talk about AI and stuff like that and the stuff that we do, you know, yeah. stuff that I do and stuff like that. But my point being is, at the end of the day, big data is just data that we have good organized concepts around and to me measurements sure. is a way of organizing that because it, it looks at it and puts concrete numbers and you know back in the day we used to joke we called it the currency because once you agree that this is the currency and everybody agrees on the formula to get to the currency and the data that was presented for the currency then it is it you know whether or not it's real or yeah. unreal it's agreed upon and to me that becomes reality at that point in time that number and once again my, 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 my memory might be skewed, but my understanding is this. You take that number, and that pretty much dictates every decision out there. It dictates how many people were listening to, I'll use radio, how many people listened to that radio show, how many people listened to that actual record, how many people yeah. listened to that DJ. Does that DJ get to keep their job? Does the record label get paid the royalties for the, the real spins? Because now if you're spinning one song to a reach 
of 20,000, your royalty rights change. Your advertisers are now paying for that reach and that currency. So every single ad spend, both on a sale and a buy, is all dictated by that one number. Is that, yes. is that fair to say? Like, and that's why we called it the currency. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, a huge I mean, billion it, it, dollar industry when you think about it. Yeah. It, and I'm not even talking about the TV part number. of it, just the actual, you know, repercussions of what that currency is to an entire, just the marketing side, to the staffing side, to the where, you, what, where the business is, does it survive or not? It's huge. So you, you have a, a yeah. big responsibility, sir. To get it right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the entire adex, television adex here in India, it's based on our data, right? So if our data is off, it's going to cause problems. The the ads aren't going to trade for what they're valued at. Uh, broadcasters are going to make wrong programming choices. Uh, agencies are going to make wrong choices in terms of their ad spends, where they're putting the, uh, the ad dollars. So, yeah, it's really, really... Uh, important is crucial and you're right currency is is exactly what we refer to it here as well oh, okay. I mean, we call it a currency in canada we call it currency here in india because that is what it is yeah and, and i think and, and once again I, I i'm i'm dwelling on it a bit by calling it a currency by focusing on a currency it is that agreed upon process that 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 mm-hmm. you know it's 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 a certain degree of faith you know all economy is based based on a certain degree of faith let's call it what it is there, there's there's repercussions if all of a sudden people stop believing that X is the provider of choice boom overnight you know you you've seen businesses crumble you know Blockbuster as an example right so it's important that you 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 know you be relevant and I think how you become relevant is and you've experienced it personally is you increase that number to a degree because i i guess and i'm not a statistician but my understanding is there's a certain thing called the uh, the law of large numbers or something like that when when you're dealing with certain sizes and this is you see it a lot with big data is your ability to make assessments with margins changes drastically than if you're trying to do it on a much smaller sample like maybe If, you know, in layman's term, explain to me how, you know, how much of a number do you need to truly make an assessment, be it in Canada or in India or in the world? Yeah, I mean, there there is no right single number. Mm -hmm. And people always ask me, what should the sample size be? And actually, my first question back to them is, well, how much money do you have? Yeah. Because economics is an important factor and we forget about that. Sample size itself is subjective. So it depends what is your goals, what are you trying to measure, how granular do you want to be, where do you want things placed, what are you trying to measure. There's a million and one different questions, and all those questions tend to be naturally at odds with one another. So it all depends on how the statistician themselves weighs each of those considerations. Now, I mean, rule of thumb, generally they say a sample size of a 1,000 will give you a good understanding about something. But that will give you a single number that you can't slice and dice and pull apart. When you get into something like television, so we have 44,000 households right now. The average household size in India is 4.1. So we have about 180,000 people in our sample, right? And are, are these real-time like samplings? Tel- Just to inter- interject, these are oh, real-time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so this is not the survey type model. This is like the old, no. it's either a box connected to the device, it's in the device, or it's the old uh, pager style device that we introduced, you know, some yeah, form so of that? It's, it's a set-top meter. It's, okay. it's hooked into the household's uh, signal that comes in there, and it sends us the data back over uh, 4G networks and Oh my God, thing, but, really? Uh, Over 4G, no less. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, that is, sorry, yeah. the, the, the guy just geeked out, sorry. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I there remember the old days where they would have down. to take the pager <laughs> and actually put it into the phone charger and it would actually dial yeah, in, right? Yeah, Come yeah. on, you know, it, yeah. 4G, yeah, That's okay. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not calling a number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's changed a lot. But, but what I was going to say is you need 180,000 people to understand India because there is well, we measure well over 600 TV stations. Mm. You think of all the languages. I mean, India is not a country. It is a subcontinent. It is really a collection of 29 countries. I think India is just like the European Union in many mm. ways. Every state in India has its own native language. Mm. And people watch programming in that language. So, you know, when you think of the complexities and then the social economic status in a country like India, which is very much 
very tiered. You know, you have villagers who live with what you and I would be shocked at. Mm. And then you have, I mean, one of the richest men in the world lives in Mumbai here as well. So you have the ultra rich on the other hand. So as an advertiser, of course, you want to be able to micro target. I mean, if you are selling Mercedes Benz, you're not going to want to target those TV shows that the villagers and Bihar are watching. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it really depends on what you're trying to understand. It depends on what the complexity is and also budget as well. Yeah. Well, I, one of the areas that I always struggled with, and once again, I'll, I'll, I brought it up when I said surveys, there's, there's a different difference between getting data from uh, the mom of four with a husband that, that commutes and I'm not being dramatic here. I'm just, you know, real life scenario. She'll take those five things and fill it out herself and mail it and take her 10 bucks. Okay. And I'm not saying sure. that is widespread, but it happens. Right. And versus yeah. uh, the device that, you know, the gentleman is in the car driving to work and actually picking up what he's hearing in the car, you know, and giving yeah. it to you 24 hours. That data is real data based on not a dog walking around with the pager attached to its collar, but, you know, a person picking sure. it up versus the same family. So it's like when I, well, the biggest thing that I picked up when I left around the time that I left was we had just introduced that into the, uh, the radio market. And all of a sudden it determined mm -hmm. that people were wa listening to radio considerably more, and maybe I'm wrong, but this is how I call it, considerably more yep, than no, what was previously right. reported. And more specifically, yep. what they were listening to was considerably more micro specific. So an example being, yeah. uh, oh, I go to work. So therefore I listen to the news station and I'm coming home. Therefore I'm listening to the rock station. And I do that five days a week for an hour and a half. Therefore, da, 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 this is what I did. But in reality, I don't like that DJ for five minutes. He's playing an ad. I'll switch over here. That never got picked up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. So, when all of a sudden you hear the world of podcasts all of a sudden getting into the hundred million dollar deals and whatnot, it's become all of a sudden, I learned 10 years ago, there's one medium that no matter where you are in the world, no matter what you're doing, you can be listening to something and doing something, whereas you can't be watching something and doing something sure. to the same degree. So if that audience of audio listenership is considerably larger, I got to get into podcasting. So I certainly hope that that was right because 10 years ago, I based me getting into the audio spectrum on that very understanding yeah. that of that. Now, video, uh -huh. I think is slightly different in that you have the set top boxes where, you know, people are watching it at home, but then you've got that yeah. disconnected, uh, you know, I'm watching it after the fact back in the day, that would have been the pre-recorded or, you know, the, the, uh, not pre-recorded, where, where you play it back, you know, on, on your set yeah. top box, right? So how are you dealing with, with that, how do I want to say it, the various tiers? Because some of these channels, some of these providers have digital packages for listening as well. That, that's got to have metrics as yeah. well, I would suspect. Yeah, so India is technologically behind the West mm. in many ways when it comes to distribution. So I think back, you know, when you and I were working together 12 years ago, right? As you said, the set-top boxes then had full catalogs in them, right? You could watch any show. You could do catch-up of whatever you wanted. It was like an OTT service itself. Mm. That technology doesn't really even exist here yet. So we've been looking at things like return path data, which in the West, all the measurement companies are leveraging this return path data, the data coming back from the cable boxes in the households. The infrastructure here doesn't exist yet. Um, you, you, you have to realize it's a developing country. It is a yeah. massive country. It is a country, 1.3 billion people, right? Huge population. So from that aspect, it's, there, India is playing catch up. Okay. So in some ways that makes my job easier because we don't have those sophisticated mm. talk boxes. There's not a lot of catch up viewing of linear TV in that. Now, the thing that's interesting about it here is India has a tendency to leapfrog with technology. Mm -hmm. we, we call it slingshotting. So digital. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the, the uptake, of smartphones in this country mm. is unbelievable because data is insanely cheap. You oh, know, God. I pay 
about $12 Canadian a month for 75 gigabytes a month on my cell phone, right? And I'm paying 75 Canadian for maybe two gigs. Yeah. And that's, and that's maybe yeah, 3G exactly. if I can get a so, signal. Yeah. Because I'm in a yeah, valley, yeah. not in Toronto. Okay. okay. <laughs> Please continue. So what, you know, what, what, what I was going to say is, so we've got roughly 300 million households in this country. Only two-thirds of them have a television. Okay, so there's still 100 million households that can still acquire a television. But what we're starting to see is people are saying, I don't need a TV. I've got my smartphone. Mm -hmm. So viewing on the smartphone is actually something quite large here. The OTT services in this country are mind blowing. You know, uh, Disney Hotstar, for example, their their Disney Hotstar or Disney Plus Hotstar service. I mean, it is an incredible OTT service. And it rivals Amazon Prime and it rivals mm. Netflix. Um, so people are consuming differently. So that brings a whole new challenge for India because that digital video, I mean, all across the globe, people are migrating from sort of traditional broadcast television to a video definition as mm. opposed to a TV definition. Mm. That I'm focused on the content, changed. not on the technology that's providing it to me. To, to, yeah, to me, I have yeah exactly. To play video. I have a lot of appliances that play video. I choose where that video yeah. plays. And it could be connected course, or it could course. be disconnected. It may not even be, you know, on the net per se. So, yeah, once that content's yeah. out there. But, but even what we talk about, but even the content itself is evolving, right? Like, gone is the day of the 30-minute TV show and the 60-minute mm -hmm. TV show, right? Now you got short-form video. you got long-form video. You've got user-generated video. You've got, I mean... The whole video ecosystem, right? So here we're looking, how, how do we start measuring digital video, just like every other country around the world is. But YouTube, do you measure that, right? Do you put YouTube in the same measurement system as a traditional TV broadcaster? These are all the sort of questions that we need to figure out as this industry is evolving and as the technology of video itself is evolving as well. Uh, I'll use an example uh, that that's, that happened in the States recently, uh, and I'll give you a sense. I'm using audio to a degree uh, to, as the focus, but but it gives you a sense of what's coming. Yeah. So there is a band called Trivium, who you may know. Are you familiar with Trivium? Okay. okay. So, I know the name. I'm not okay. familiar so with Okay, so band out of Florida, them. been around for as long as, you know, the bands we know have been around, but you don't hear them because, you know, they're more yeah. death metal, <laughs> you know, that type of stuff, right? So they had a brand new album come out, and they live streamed it. Uh, from the guy's house where he played the entire album playthroughs because he's got a Twitch channel. He twitches eight okay. hours a day. He twitches while he's on the road. He's got a, a live pack where, you know, you have the behind the scenes. He's live streaming his concerts. He's in tight with the CEOs of Twitch. You know what I mean? He was page yeah. one Twitch, right? That is his medium. So when he had a release party for his album, he was able to reach quite a bit of an audience. But here's the problem. Okay. is him playing that audio on his channel, his own music. He wrote the whole song, started triggering problems because yeah. there's no way of measuring what the spin count is on that song when he's streaming it. What do you consider huh. a hit? Yeah. Okay, he's streaming this to 18,000 people. Is that the same as saying that 18,000 people bought the album, bought the single? Da, da, da. They, weren't, they were not getting the measurements that they needed to yeah. do the billing for the royalties, okay? And to me, a lot of it comes down to that, whether or not it's, it's video or, 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 or audio, is how do you pay for that content? How do you get the money back? Because it's not cheap to produce. Yeah. And here in a scenario not. where you may have a live streamer who is playing a video game or whatnot, and in the background, he's like, you know what? I want to play some Trivium because that gets me going and I'm going to rock this show. He puts on Trivium, all of a sudden his entire broadcast, the audio is canceled because, you know, he yeah. doesn't have the right. That song is now not being broadcasted to a million people that he would never be able to reach, you know, so you've now got sure. that potential loss. So that world of digital changes more than just the set-top box. It's one of those things where that content is digital. In the purest sense, it's yeah. measured digitally, it's, and it's able to be transferred digitally and, and propagated digitally. But how we measure that and how we make money on that becomes such a, a problem. 
and that's where the economy, yeah. of YouTube and all that has really changed the world and where you're seeing people like Amazon Prime having a content production hub purely yeah. to prove that they can have a Amazon Prime supplier agreement with you. Okay, and it has nothing to yeah. do with the video. The video is a freebie for you to be the sole source so that when your Internet of Things device says, I need new soap, it's ordered on Amazon yeah. while you're watching the latest Top Gear variants. You know, so you've got yeah. these businesses that have real brick and mortars behind the scenes that have created video arms in the digital space mm -hmm. to create an audience whose sole purpose is to sole source that warehouse. That's it. It's huge, right? right yeah. So when you think of something like India, they're going to leap, not just leapfrog, they're going to, you know, slingshot past that to such a massive scale. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because it's massive. Sorry, uh, sorry, I interjected some of the disposable yeah. web stuff there. It, it, it's that, going back to that scale factor, you're able to take something that you know very well because uh, in some ways, as you say, it's old news to you, but on a larger scale. And you're also able to see the predictive changes of yeah. what's coming down the path where how do I measure something that at the end of the day needs to have a dollar value assigned to it that, so that someone gets the money so that that economy of content continues? Because if that doesn't get paid, yeah. that's why musicians are broke. Yep. You know, in any case. No, you're, I, you're, I, you're I, absolutely right. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear a few more thoughts from you because, uh, like I said, we're going to have a follow-up on uh, later. And uh, like I said, I don't want to take up too much of your time right now. When you think of your team and, sure. and the overall scope of what they're focusing on, okay, we've talked a bit about some of the new yeah. challenges that are coming in, which are new to you in some ways, but current to some, you know what I mean? So there's that, that yeah. initial, I'm able to assess, learn from those iterations and slingshot past that. What are you doing uh, currently to like, is there a, a larger team involved in that process? Is that something that that is still so early in the stages that it's not quite established? Because to me, that's coming soon, especially with so many people well, now I mean, working from home. Yeah, for for us right now, it really is focusing on multi screen. Mm. You know, some countries refer to it as four screen. We, we call it multi screen here. But that is the reality of how video has gone, right? As you said earlier, you don't care about the technology that it's on, you care about the content. Video now gets consumed on laptops, on tablets, on phones, on you know, TV sets, smart TV sets, all sorts of these things, right? So right now you have different media ecosystems. Right, so you can get your numbers from your OTT streaming services. You know what the audiences are there. And you know what who's watching on TV as well. But you don't understand that deduplication. And multi-screen, I think that discourse of choosing that term is really appropriate because they aren't two separate audiences. Mm -hmm. They're the same people. We move between screens, right? So you don't have your your people who watch TV on, your, on their cell phones. I mean, some people do exclusively, but most people watch on their cell phones, plus watch on their TV, plus watch on their laptop. So understanding that deduplication, right? Ultimately, that is what the advertisers need to know because they're, I think in some ways, perhaps they're overspending right now because all these data sets are all separate. They're all siloed mm -hmm. and they don't factor it. So when you add them together, you know, the, the true sum is actually less than the actual sum, right? Because there's that duplication. So for us, and, and, and this isn't an Indian thing. I mean, every country is, is doing this, but Bark, we're heavily focusing on this right now, is how do we make that deduplicated TV plus digital video single audience? So you can then understand how people move between their screens and exactly how many people there are. Yeah, and, and I think that that's important because to me, it's also how fragmented is that attention span as well? Like, you know, I, I use this as the example with the Joe Rogan uh, being uh, purchased with, with uh, uh, what you call it, Spotify. You know, $100 million for an audience. Sure, he's got a CRM. He's accumulated the CRM. He's got all these deals. And the first 20 minutes of his show are ads, no different than Howard Stern's. I've yet to come across anybody that's listened to the first 20 minutes of his show. 
Okay, so from an yeah. ad spend, your audience is there, and most of his podcasts are three hours long. I have yet to come across anybody that listens to it in one shot. And to your point, yeah. I'll start listening to it partially in audio, then go over to a video of the same interview midway through. So it's not even video to video, device to device. I'm changing entire media in my consumption yeah. of the same interview. I sometimes don't care if I see the video. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I know where I left off, right? And my Spotify or whatever will be yeah. able to flag where I left off. No different than if I go from, uh, I'll use Netflix as the example. If I start watching a show in the basement, that's on an Xbox. I go upstairs, I'm continuing the show on a PlayStation. Yeah. I'm now in my bed going to, to sleep, ending the show on a smartphone. That is not even, doesn't even have a phone number. So it's purely just yeah. that, not even a phone. It's a, a device. How do you measure yeah. that across? And more importantly, I bypassed every single ad in the process. Yeah. It's tough. It, 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 yeah. it becomes no, very it, challenging because at the is. end of the day, you got to make money for the economy to continue. It's a simple. And part of the yeah. measurement is determining what the bill is. But I, I, I want to interject one yeah, thing. Please. You made a really interesting point there where you said oh, God, you help me. <laughs> all the ads, right? Yeah. And, and it's true because Netflix itself is 100% subscription-based. Oh, I'm talking just the Joe Rogan one where, where you know, I know where the product placements are and I skip that bit. But sorry, please continue. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I so so and let me put it this way. So here's the difference between – Joe Rogan's strategy on YouTube versus Joe Rogan's upcoming strategy on Spotify. Okay. And, and this is fabricated, yeah. but if it comes out to be true, I want a cut of it because fundamentally it's this on YouTube, he'll put 20 minutes at the beginning of his podcast. Same thing with the audio thing. So he records video extracts the audio. He's got the podcast and he's got the YouTube channel from the same interview, right? Simple process. And he's got his engineer yeah. there flipping the camera. So it's a, a live to tape, which is even easier. It's live to tape. Add, add an intro at the beginning, throw in the bumpers, you're done. So he does three of those uh, back to back to back. His day's done. That's a 12-hour day. So that content's out there. He'll put on 20 minutes of ads, and then there'll be product placements throughout the thing mm -hmm. where the guest is either promoting a book or a product and, or he's slapping something, right? So those in-product placements are huge sure. on a digital market because that can be dynamic. Okay, whereas the beginning tends to be skipped. Yeah. Most people have come to a point where I know where that little square is in the corner, the ad, the commercials are coming up, you know, so skip 45 yeah. seconds, you know, you're set, right? But back in digital, Spotify is going to be in a scenario where they're going to be able to take real-time profile information as to who's listening to that profile and that dynamic insert, which is the in-product placement in the stream, is now dynamic to me at the time of listening. That's massive versus in the old course, days, yeah. that ad that was recorded 10 years ago is still the same ad today and not making any conversions, right? Now you're able to convert on that same content. So yeah. what they've done is they've taken a thousand interviews where they're going to be able to put dynamic content interjected into that, that is going to be entirely based on data of profiles and, and measurements and all that. You take that model at the, at the, at any platform, you know, you're able to measure stuff. But as you say, those are different packages. That data is not over here. That data is not over here. Me listening to the yeah. podcast over here and then shifting over to YouTube, that's two different pieces of media in your world. Not, not even the, like from a Google point of view, those yeah. are not the same piece, and yet they are. That, like, that relationship is broken from the beginning. How do you measure that? It's not even in yeah. the sample. You know, so no, it's massively yeah. complex. And that goes back to my mm -hmm. point is if you believe in the currency and you believe in the methodology, I think the economy continues. But you need to truly understand that space because if you get it wrong or people start doubting you, yeah, it, it, <laughs> that's how inflation begins. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It, it all comes down to that trust. It comes down to standards agreed upon standards, agreed upon metrics, agreed upon methodology, and really independence of measurement and transparency in measurement. And if you have all that, the currency will work. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that's why you have establishments in place 
you know, whose job is to do that. And I know in Canada, it was member based. Is it member based there? Or is that a, a government? Uh, it is. Yeah. Okay. It's same, same thing. So it's the same model, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. so same thing. You, you have a group of people that have, this is like software as a service or, or data as a service for in your particular cases, you've got a group of people yeah. that instead of building their own platforms have bonded together to say, this is our representative who will build a platform that we will all use. And there's economies of scale of being able to, well, we used to call yeah. it the warehouse. You build a warehouse warehouse and you run the data through the warehouse you know it's as simple as that yeah but at the end of the day it's 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 numbers and I always like I said to a degree the relationship and I think that's the biggest thing that changes once you've got real uh, data that is on the profile data that is connected to the watching data because we've never really understood who the listener is it could have been the dog you know what I mean sure. you really didn't know but now I truly can understand uh, what the true influence yeah. of me listening to something is nothing. Joe Rogan listening to something is something as an example, right? One view, yeah. completely different results. Yeah.